Councilman Hussein. Councilmember Garza, Councilmember Hussein. Councilmember Spitzley. Council, Councilmember Dunbar. Okay. Okay, she's in the chambers. All right. I'd like to call to order the council meeting of September 9th. If the clerk could please call the roll. Councilmember Dunbar. Yes. Councilmember Garza. Here. Councilmember Hussein. Here. Councilmember Jackson. Councilmember Spadafore. Here. Councilmember Spitzley. Here. Councilmember Washington. Here. Councilmember Wood. Here. There are seven members present at quorum. Councilmember Jackson is absent. And? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We are to the meditation and pledge of allegiance. All right. With that, do we have anyone that um, ha would like to remember anybody at this uh, particular time? Uh, Councilmember uh, Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. I mean, I just want to, you know, just remember the folks down in the Bahamas and, uh, and up our coast um, who are reeling from tornadoes and flooding. Um, from the hurricanes, I mean, how absolutely horrible um, for, um, you know, Freeport and, and some of the other communities down there and for our, also our communities in, in North Carolina and South Carolina and up the coast. So if we could just, you know, um, not only send uh, aid if you can, but also just, you know, say a prayer for them, I'd appreciate it. Um, anyone else? Councilman, or I'm sorry, Mayor Shore. I'll leave that I'm alone. So, I'm so used to looking down and just rolling. Going, go ahead, Mayor. Um, I, we, I hope we can remember Pastor Albert Kelly's wife, Barbara, passed away last night. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, we do have 9-11 uh, coming up on Wednesday, and if we could remember those that uh, fell during that uh, tragic time as though, along with those that um, suffered um, during that or continually um, suffering uh, from the aftermath of 9-11. So, yes. And speaking of that, I just want to um, ask everybody to just think about um, Patrick Anderson of Anderson Economic Group. He was actually in the towers um, on 9-11. He has a really powerful story. Um, in a story of faith uh, about how he escaped right before the second plane hit. And so I always think about Pat during this time and I always send him a little shout out on 9-11, um, just, just thanking him for being there. But um, I think it's, it's good to have somebody here in town and he, was, he actually lived through it and he has a really good story. If you ever see him, you should ask him about it. Thanks. Thank you. If we could rise. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You have for your approval the print council proceedings of August 26th. Vice President Spadafor. Defer to uh, member. Oh, that's right. You weren't there. I'm sorry. Uh, Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. I move for approval of the minutes of August 26. Uh, we have a motion on the minutes. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, so that takes us to. Uh, we are to special ceremonies. We have a tribute in recognition of the Lansing Harmony celebration. Council Member Hussein. If all of those that are here for the Harmony celebration could come down with Councilmember Hussein. So if you got one, just here for just a moment. 
um, and then we'll certainly get some of you guys up to the mic. Um, it is a true uh, honor uh, to, uh, number one, recognize uh, the Lansing Harmony Celebration, which has become um, now an annual event. We're actually in our second year. Uh, it's a, a festival, and we'll talk a little bit about um, the festival, kind of its inception, and, and, and what we kind of aim to do um, with the Lansing Harmony Celebration in just a moment. Uh, but it's, it's also an honor to recognize the folks that are behind me. Uh, these are all volunteers uh, over the course of probably the last few years. Um, they have volunteered hundreds and hundreds of hours. Uh, some of these folks have two jobs, some of these folks have families, so a lot of the emails uh, between respective committee members and things of that nature are at 11, 12 o'clock at, at night, 2, 3 in the morning. Uh, so these folks are working in, incredibly hard. In any event, back in 2017, um, there, was, there, there started to be some conversations uh, about South Lansing, placemaking, um, uh, and, and you can do that in a myriad of ways, but one of the things that people started talking about was festivals and events, and, and why aren't we doing more in South Lansing to augment uh, what Men Making a Difference do uh, or does with the community cookout, uh, as well as uh, Crystal Ray with the Fiesta. Uh, why aren't we doing more to, to create the social cohesion, uh, kind of that, uh, uh, that, that, connect, uh, that connection between neighborhoods, and really uh, working hard to make sure that we're reinforcing identity uh, in terms of who we are as a, as a community. And so uh, this group kind of answered the bell uh, and started talking in earnest about putting together a festival um, and then really speaking to um, who we are as a community using the vehicles of art, uh, music, food, uh, and the like. And, and so when we, when we started having some conversations on this group behind me, uh, they really started talking about um, the strength of, of Lansing being our people and being our diversity. And so through the festival, the Lansing Harmony Celebration, uh, this group has really tried to, to highlight uh, those aspects of our community. Uh, last year on September 8th, uh, we uh, had the first Lansing Harmony Celebration. Uh, and it was, in, in terms of some of the, the, the benefits that I uh, mentioned at the, at the outset of this conversation, um, th th they materialized in a big way. And so the group, um, although they were tired uh, in, the, in the weeks after uh, the, the event, in earnest, they started talking about a year two. Uh, and we certainly appreciate uh, the fact that they were willing to do that. Um, they're a little bit insane, uh, to be quite frank, uh, but we certainly um, appreciate uh, their willingness and, and their desire uh, to make sure that they could continue to provide uh, this celebration to the community. Uh, with that being said, I'm not going to read the whole resolution, but I will read just a few of the whereas's. Uh, it says, whereas the first annual Lansing Harmony celebration took place on September 8, 2018 in South Lansing as an effort to bring people together from myriad of backgrounds to, uh, to celebrate our region's diversity and strengthen the relationship between the people and spaces within our community. And whereas the second annual Lansing Harmony Celebration would be held on September 14th, 2019 at Ben Davis Park in South Lansing, Lansing Harmony 2019 has been designed as a multi multicultural festival meant to celebrate the region's diversity through music, arts, and food and will be free to the public. And whereas the Lansing Har Harmony Celebration Committee has volunteered many hours over the course of the past two years to establish the Lansing Harmony Celebration, and by doing so has endeavored to provide rich cultural and social interactions to the people of our region and to create a sense of shared belonging, now therefore be resolved that the Lansing City Council hereby recognizes the second annual Lansing Harmony Celebration and extends our appreciation to the Lansing Harmony Celebration Committee for all of their work in the creation and presentation of Lansing Harmony, we wish you much success. What I'd like to do before I actually introduce the committee um, and then maybe have a few uh, folks come up to the mic and actually talk about the, the various components of the festival and, and what people can uh, expect uh, as part of the festival, um, I'd like to actually move the resolution. Thank you, Councilmember Hussein. We have a motion on the resolution. Um, any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. And before he speaks, uh, ask anyone else to come up. We also want to give a special thanks to Councilmember Hussein uh, for him to stand there and not get recognized the amount of work that he's done on making sure that Rejuvenate, or <coughs> excuse me, uh, Lansing Harmony is um, doing everything that it can would be um, a, a crime. So we want to thank you for the work that you've also contributed to this. I appreciate that. Um, so with that being said, we do have uh, Mr. Dave Klein, we have Larry Groot, we have Elaine Wombalt, we have Meredith Johnson, uh, we have Mike Redding, and we have Alfred uh, Lawrence with us tonight. There are a number of committee members that were not able to be present, um, and we have also had tremendous uh, contributions over the past two years from uh, Council Member uh, Garza, uh, who supports all things South Lansing, has been tremendous. Uh, Councilman Washington Wood, 
uh, and pretty much everybody uh, that is on the day. So we really appreciate the support from uh, our council uh, colleagues. Uh, so in any event, I am going to invite Elaine uh, Wombalt to the mic to speak uh, about the Kids Zone that is part of the celebration. Thank you, Adam. And um, I echo what Council Member Wood has said. Um, Adam is just too humble at times, um, but he has done so much and given so much time so this can come forth and has given us great leadership. So I thank you for that. Um, the Kids Zone, we chose to have it in Benjamin Davis Park because that area has a lot of economically challenged families and we wanted it free to everyone. And if it wasn't for our wonderful sponsors giving us the money to pay for the expense, w this would not be possible. So we thank them. We are going to have a kids stage, and I'm gonna read it so I don't leave out anybody. Lansing Hoop, Stevens um, Puppets, the Magic Lady, and a magician, Brad Len, um, Lancaster, who is, they're just wonderful. Um, kids, young and old, will enjoy them. And then at our Kids Zone, we have a lot of hands-on activities, all kinds of learning experience, face painting. The Lansing School District was going to have a teacher there that's going to give art um, lessons, Potter Park Zoo, YMCA, 4-H, Lansing Police, the Fire Department, the Forestry Department, and more. And I want Meredith to just come forward and just speak to Home Depot. Um, Meredith has um, joined us this year, and she went out with a passion, and she got them to be part of our event, and I think it's going to be just wonderful for everyone there. Meredith? Hello. Well, we got Home Depot to be a huge sponsor for us, and they're gonna be bringing probably 150, 200 of the kids' activities things for kids to build, so they're gonna be a big, huge part of this too. So the kids will love that. So bring the kids out. So another part of the festival um, is, is food uh, and making sure that we, you know, it was important that we uh, made sure that we secured a number of food vendors. Just a funny story, last year, uh, probably just a few days before the event, we were still begging people uh, to be part of this festival in terms of food. Uh, I think it's a testament to this committee, uh, as well as the success of the first year, we actually had people knocking down our door this year, uh, wanting to be part of the celebration uh, and actually provide uh, their, their services to the, uh, to the festival. So with that being said, I'm gonna bring uh, Mike Redding to the mic to talk about food vendors. Um, for starters, we had uh, five food vendors last year for a first time that was good. This year we have eight with four of them being brand new. And the ones we have coming in this year is Fire and Rice, which they do a Pinella, is that how you pronounce that? Paella. Paella, which is Spanish, 517 coffee, hot beverages, A Mist, which is cool beverages and lemonades, Marsh's Chicken, which does soul food, Menifee Foods, which is Native American, El Burrito, which is our Mexican, and then Got Smoke, which is barbecue, and then Summertime Freeze. So there's a good selection of food, so please come out. There's something there for everybody. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll bring Alfred Lawrence uh, to the mic to discuss our main stage entertainment. Um, well, as I said, I was primarily responsible for the main stage, booking the uh, groups. So I did have a little help, uh, which I appreciated because of my job. I do have a nine to five. Um, bands that will be performing, um, everyone should know who Star Farm is, probably the land, uh, biggest area here. That was my big coup of the year, um, along with Global Village. Um, Star Farm's opening up approximately 1230, 1245, that's where we end up. Um, Global Village will be closing the event at seven. In between, we have, uh, we brought back Glenn Aaron, uh, Pipe Band, they were there last year. They were fantastic to listen to and to watch the dancers. Um, I forgot your name. Oh, they're not Glenn coming. Aaron. Okay, so it'll just be Glenn Aaron. They're they're good even without the dancers. Um, however, Larry, you brought in. Um, yep, Dina Song Band, Burundi Choir. Uh, and uh, we also brought back the Habibi dancers who are also there, um, absolutely mesmerizing to watch. Um, and obviously this is gonna be a kid-friendly show, so bring your whole family out, have a good time. Thanks. And 
then last but not least, there is an art component as well uh, to this festival. And so I did want to bring Larry Groot uh, forward just to talk about maybe not, maybe not respective vendors, uh, but kind of what you can expect in terms of the art side of the festival. Well, um, Lansing is, um, is our capital, and we need to be uh, promoting ourselves in that way. And, and one of the big things is the culture and the arts that exist here, whether that be music or fine arts. We have a huge component of uh, really high-class artists in the area. And, uh, and this is one of the stages that uh, we'll probably have 25 to 30 artists out there. Um, I got to twist some arms to get some some high-level artists out, and and uh, and it's going to be really cool. I'm really excited. Uh, we uh, the mayor. I really appreciate the fact that uh, he is getting 73 degree weather and sunny. Right? <laughs> you, 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 you done? Somebody. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, but uh, but it's going to be a beautiful day. Lots of things to do. Um, we kind of scratched uh, the surface of what's going on for the day. And uh, invite everybody from the uh, greater Lansing area out to see this. And, and again, Adam, it's just been amazing the amount of work that you've done. And, and you know, he's the glue that's kept everybody together and things going forward. It's, it's been a pleasure working with you. Certainly appreciate that. Really quickly, I do want to uh, thank Larry McConnell, who's in the uh, in the audience. Uh, last year, he was our entire parking operation. We appreciate you. <laughs> and then also Brett Kaczynski. Um, we've, uh, you know, we needed to be accommodated this year, and it wasn't necessarily easy. Uh, Brett has been incredibly accessible. Um, he's been helpful. Uh, and we certainly appreciate him, his office, his department. Uh, so, so again, thank you. Uh, we hope to see you guys this Saturday, 12 to 8. Thank you. Thank you. Our next special ceremony is a presentation of the Todd Martin Youth Leadership Midwest National Junior Tennis League. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I believe we have uh, Brett Kaczynski coming down to take care of this one. Okay. There he is. <coughs> Thank you. So I have with me here uh, Rebecca Swan Johnson, and she is with the Todd Martin um, Youth Leadership Program, and we're here to recognize them tonight. We have had a relationship with the Todd Martin Youth Leadership Program since 1994, and I think when everybody thinks about Todd Martin and that, it's always about tennis. And I think that you're going to see that even though tennis is a big part of this program, it's much more than that. And this program really focuses on uh, youth and the under-resourced families in our communities and really teaches them about tennis, about education, about life skills, and about leadership. And through that, they serve over 3,000 kids a year in that program. And uh, the organization is continuing to grow and continuing, they, they not only provide this through a Friday night uh, tennis program through the summer uh, program with the after school program. They're in the middle schools. I know you're serving lunch as well in some of the, uh, some of the schools there um, and developing a tutoring program as well. And it is for these things, I just want to read some of these stats here. So again, over 3,000 participants, they offer over 500 hours of physical activity, of physical fitness time. Uh, 108 hours of tutoring. Uh, they have over 70 volunteers that participate in over 1,200 hours of uh, volunteer work. And it is through all this, though, that the costs to the city of Lansing are a net zero. So everything that is not brought in with fees for the programs is paid for by the, by the Youth Leadership Fund. And it is because of those things that uh, this group was recognized this year by the USTA as the Midwest um, award winner here for, for the section. And so they are the club of the year for the Midwest. So congratulations. I'll represent that award there. I did also want to mention that then they are still in the running for the national 
uh, Club of the Year. So very good for us to have that here in Lansing. And I wanted to invite Rebecca forward to talk a little bit more about uh, some fundraisers that they have coming up and about the program. Thanks, Brett. Um, so yeah, we do tennis, we do education, life skills. Um, we've partnered with the Lansing School District. We're doing lunchtime tennis. Um, and continuing to expand that to a fourth school this year and starting some after, pro after school programs at those schools. Um, and really we're only able to do all of that because we have a board of 20 actually um, who all really believe in the mission um, and the vision that we have. And Todd Martin grew up in Lansing and started the foundation in 1994 and he's still involved. And so he will be here on October 11th for our annual fundraiser. Um, and so that's an evening event, um, a dinner and an auction. Um, we have a great host committee, including Mayor Shore and Aaron. Um, Sherry Jones is gonna be our MC. We have Matt Steginga um, will be there. So we'll have a great group out. And then the day after we have some kids clinic and um, an adult clinic with Todd as well. So lots of good stuff going on. Um, we've started our school year programming already. We also obviously work with Parks and Rec a lot and support their after school program and serve their youth as well by introducing them to tennis. Um, yeah, but always open to feedback. Just thinking about your festival. We'd love to be there next year and do tennis. So any other opportunities that you guys know of, we'd love to be out there and just be in the community serving kids. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we are two comments by council members and the city clerk. Council member comments. I see council member Washington, Garza, Hussein, Spitzley, and Spadafore. Bad for you were at the end. <laughs> um, I just quickly want to say thank you, Councilwoman, Council President Wood, for hosting my um, first contact meeting this past Saturday. Thank you to Mayor Shore for attending, and thank you for to Dick Peffley for attending. I've gotten really good feedback from people that were very happy to see everybody, and. Um, there was even something on my Facebook page saying how much this person enjoys Carol Wood because she's so wonderful. And I responded, hey, wait a minute, my feelings are hurt here. <laughs> I just really want to say thank you to everybody. It's always good when we can get um, city officials and the Board of Water and Light officials out to the public for their questions. So thank you. I had really good feedback. <laughs> Council Member Garza. Thank you, Madam President. Two upcoming events I would like to let everybody know about. Unfortunately, they fall on uh, two other events in Lansing. So the first one is my second ward constituent contact meeting. That is at 1435 East Miller Road. That's Fire Station 44. That's this Saturday, uh, September 14th at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And unfortunately, that's the same time the Lansing Harmony celebration is going on. Um, so, sorry about that, Adam. I plan on, if it's a small meeting, we'll, we'll, we'll all cruise over there and go hang out, because I plan on <laughs> attending that anyways. Uh, and the next one is the upcoming Housing and Neighborhood Resource Summit scheduled from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Tuesday, September 24th at North School. That's 333 East Miller Road. And unfortunately, that's on the same night as Rejuvenate in South Lansing. So, sorry about that, Elaine and Carol and everybody else. Uh, but uh, those are the two events I have to share. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Hussein. First, I just want to remind folks that we will not be having, obviously, our constituent contact meeting uh, this Saturday. Uh, historically, we've always had it the second Saturday of the month. But um, in lieu of the constituent contact meeting, we're hoping that you um, consider coming out to uh, the Harmony Celebration. We will be out there incredibly early uh, getting set up. Uh, and that is the reason, obviously, I cannot uh, host this meeting this month. Um, the Southwest Action Group, and we've talked a lot about the Southwest Action Group as part of these proceedings. Uh, their meeting is this Thursday at 6 p.m. at 3434 Pleasant Grove. Uh, and so this is actually a parcel of land. It's a, a piece of property uh, that the Southwest Action Group has actually purchased. Uh, and in the spring, there will be uh, construction. 
God willing, uh, for a town square that has been long discussed, we are actually going to meet right there at that property. Uh, we're going to have some canopies up. We'll have some uh, some chairs and some tables and things of that nature. So I hope you can join us um, to not only um, discuss uh, the forward movement of Southwest Lansing and, and, and learn about what we're doing in Southwest Lansing, but to be part of or to become part of that team uh, that has been so instrumental in, in the forward movement of Southwest Lansing. Um, and then we also have the president of the Lansing Eaton Neighborhood Organization with us tonight, Linda Appling. We appreciate her being here. Uh, her meeting, uh, her neighborhood meeting, will actually be this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Those meetings take place at Wood Creek uh, Learning Center at 4000 Wood Creek Lane. So if you're a business owner or a resident north of Jolly, west of Waverly, all the way to the Grand River, um, you're not only um, welcome, but you're encouraged to attend. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us to Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to briefly mention um, this weekend they had the Moores Park Pavilion Party. Mm -hmm. And I know that Council Member Hussein was there. I saw you on Facebook. And also the mayor was there a little bit. But it was to open up the new pavilion at Moores Park that was under construction and Parks and Rec were there. And it was, it was really a great event. We had, um, you know, Parks and Rec had the bounce house and um, there was painting um, from the, um, I think they're called the Reach, Reach Arts were there. Um, there were a number of um, food from, um, from, from barbecue to coffee to cake and ice cream, but it was a really, a, uh, uh, the Morris Park Neighborhood Association really put on a great event. Um, the pavilion looks amazing. Um, the additional parking there um, is, is great, and so it, it's a great asset to that, to that neighborhood. So well done. Thank you. Council Member Dunbar. You, you didn't have, oh, okay. <laughs> Vice President Spadafor. <laughs> You're before the mayor. <laughs> just trying to make sure I didn't go. Um, first of all, just I wanted to congratulate the Lansing Regional Sister Cities Commission on a very successful event, um, a celebration of global diversity. It was our 25th anniversary dinner. Um, the mayor represented the city well um, in his opening remarks, but special congratulations to Barbara Roberts Mason and Maxine Kane. Uh, for putting on a very successful event, the Sisters City Commission. It's very entertaining. Uh, foods from all over the world, performances from Ghana, Korea, China, Italy. Um, it was a um, five and a half hour per, um, event, um, but a very well done um, five and a half hours. So congratulations to the Sister City Commission on that event. Okay, any other council member comments? We will go to the clerk. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, it's uh, new new uh, school season, so uh, that brings a couple of things. We had a great team of volunteers uh, do a lot of voter registration over at Lansing Community College. Got about 300 students registered, so I want to thank the volunteers um, who, who assisted with that. Um, and then I also, uh, with the start of a new term, uh, we have a new uh, intern who's assisting my office with the city council meeting. So I want to introduce everybody to Nikki Bangu, who's in the back, and we'll be helping uh, helping out on Monday evenings for the next uh, couple of months. Um, and then with that, we are to oh, and I should mention uh, it'll be about three weeks when ballots go out. Uh, so if you ha if you got a ballot in August, the application you used most likely was for both elections, so you're just going to get a ballot in the mail. Um, if you did not get a ballot uh, mailed to your <coughs> home or pick one up for August, then uh, and you want to vote absentee, uh, please contact my office. We are sending out new uh, applications to those who are on our automatic application mailing list and didn't return one for August. So, you if you get one in the mail, it probably means that uh, we think we need you to sign that and send it back to get you a ballot. Um, but there is still lots of time to get those ballots. Uh, and again, we'll be mailing those out uh, September 27th. So keep an eye out for those. Um, Mr. Clerk, before you go on, I know that there were some comments on Facebook about Averill School and um, the change in the voting location. If you could go over again um, the reasons for, for those changes. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, so Averill School, um, for some reason, we've just continued to have, uh, over uh, several years, issues with that physical space and location. Um, it's an unheated, 
or I'm sorry, it's an unair conditioned gym. So in the in the summer times, uh, it's very uncomfortable for our election workers to be there all day. Uh, the gym is actually not uh, very big for the number of voters who vote there. Uh, and you know, with the schools, sometimes we have issues with them wanting to keep doors locked uh, and things like that. So uh, I did make the recommendation and requested council to move. Uh, to move that in with Tabernacle of David where another precinct already votes. Um, you know, I, I know some people prefer not to go into a church that they're not a member of, um, but you know, on election day we have been using that location for a number of years and uh, it has been a successful uh, location in, you know, in terms of the physical building for us. So. Um, and then uh, we also changed, um, we moved one of the precincts that was voting at Luton and one of the precincts that was voting at um, Elm, uh, Elmhurst. Elmhurst, yes. <laughs> um, Elmhurst, uh, we moved one of each of those precincts to Dwight Rich, uh, which has more parking and a bigger space. So leaving uh, one precinct of each Luton and Elmhurst um, that We'll let those spaces run more efficiently and, and combining the two third ward ones at, uh, at Dwight Rich. So um, does that answer? Yes, I think it does. Thank you. Um, community event announcements. If there's anyone in the audience with a community event, we'll give you one minute to tell us the details. that time of year again the fall tour for the Friends of Lansing's historic cemeteries is coming up soon it's Sunday September 29th at 3 p.m. in Mount Hope Cemetery our theme this year is very intriguing I think and I think you will find it also murder mystery and mayhem and because of that theme we do recommend that children under 13 probably should not attend this time um, and it's free it's open to the public there's refreshments at the halfway point and again, it's Sunday the 29th at 3 p.m. in Mount Hope Cemetery. Thank you. Thank you. Any other community events? Thank you, um, Council, for the recognition. And I'm going to give it one more hit in case somebody's turned in late. Lansing Harmony Celebration is this Saturday at Benjamin Davis Park in South Lansing, um, September 14th. It's a free event, and it's from noon to 8 p.m. I hope everybody can make it. And again, thank you very much for your kindness. Thank you. Thank you. Any other community events? All right, seeing none. Uh, speaker registration for public comment on legislative matters. Um, that's the blue sheet in the back. If you do want to speak on uh, the scheduled public hearing or any of the items listed under consent agenda, resolutions for action or ordinance for introduction, uh, you need to jump up right now because uh, Nikki is going to bring it to me in a few seconds. Uh, and with that, we are to the mayor's comments. Mayor Shore. Okay. Um, many of the things I was going to mention got said, so Moore's Park, check. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, that was a blast. We had a really good time. There's nothing like uh, coming through, and the Moore's Park residents were ecstatic to have um, a pavilion once again. Um, Sister Cities, thank you for mentioning that. Um, the food was incredible. Um, next year, everybody should come, because we got food from all over the world, um, and the speakers were great. Um, this morning, I was privileged to be part of the, the open house for the Dwight Rich School of the Arts, um, our tax dollars at work, uh, our bond dollars at work, uh, beautiful auditorium, uh, new kindergarten. Um, there's a lot of really great things going on in the school district with the passage of the bond, and it all looks beautiful. Um, I can tell you because I drop my son off every day at school and I see the incredible work that was done. Um, additionally, I, I was able to participate in the uh, opening of the Xavier DeGroat Autism Foundation office at Beekman, um, which is uh, also very cool because Xavier does a lot. Of, most of us, almost yes. all of us, know Xavier, um, and we know what a tremendous advocate he is. Now he's got an office at Beekman that was made possible by the school district and, and Kelly Dean and a variety of others, Greg Eaton. Um, so that was it was uh, great to be part of that this morning. Um, tomorrow evening is the public opening party for Rotary Park. Now many of us have been there. 
And um, if you haven't been to Rotary Park at night, you're missing out. It's gorgeous with the lights and the fireplace. Um, our staff and the Community Foundation and all the sponsors really did a great job. So tomorrow is the official opening party at 6 p.m. at Rotary Park. Um, the 9-11 ceremony was mentioned, but for some details, uh, the Lansing 9-11 ceremony is, is Wednesday on September 11th. Um, 8.30 a.m. at Wentworth Park, uh, which is right across from the Radisson where that big steel beam is. Uh, Governor Whitmer will be joining us and speaking. Lieutenant Governor Gilcrest will be there to read names. Um, I'll be there to speak. Our police and firefighters will be there. Um, it is always a very somber event, but we have to remember every year, so I hope as many people as we can get will be there. Um, they always ring the bell um, every time one of the planes hit the buildings. When that time comes, they ring the bell. Um, and it's a, it's a great event that um, is just getting bigger and bigger here in mm -hmm. Lansing and in honor. Um, and I actually have on my list, Lansing Harmony is Saturday, but I assume that will have already been covered. Um, and it was. <laughs> it, 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 it was, and, but I will throw in my two cents that I'm excited to, to kick off Lansing Harmony. It's always fun to see Adam running around all sweaty and crazy from two in the morning. <laughs> Yesterday, I, I, he was like dripping and, uh, and it was cold, but, um, but Adam and Elaine and, and the whole committee um, do such a great job. And I'm excited to be there. I'm excited to open it up. And now I know that Star Farm is going to be there at 1, at, uh, 1 p.m. And um, I'm a big fan of a good 80s band. So I will be staying for a little while and jamming to Star Farm. So um, uh, nobody take pictures. Uh, <laughs> there will be not that much jamming. Um, but, uh, but so that's what I've got on my list. Lots of, it, it's fun to hear Councilman Garza apologize for having two events at the same time. We keep saying there's a lot going on in Lansing. There's a lot going on in Lansing. And, uh, and I'm excited to hear that. So don't apologize, Councilman, because we got a lot going on and, and uh, you'll get to all of it. Um, so thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Okay, we are to public comment on legislative matters. And uh, as I indicated, that includes all of the resolutions uh, for action tonight, as well as the ordinance for introduction and the following public hearing uh, in consideration of an ordinance to repeal chapter 288, section 288.18 to eliminate the minimum qualifications for the director of management services as no such position exists within the city. Councilmember Washington, did you wanna say anything else on that one? Um, just very quickly, the clerk read it correctly. It's to repeal the minimum qualifications qualifications for the director of management services. We're just kind of going through and cleaning up some of the ordinances for the minimum qualifications of different departments. When you get a new administration, you tend to get new departments and new qualifications. So this is just a matter of cleaning up the ordinances. Thank you. Okay, our first speaker is Elaine Wambolt, followed by Loretta Stanaway. Good evening, Elaine Wombo, South Lansing resident. In the past, I've come before this council and request that the city council opt out of having commercial marijuana businesses in the city of Lansing. I am not the only resident that wants this to happen. I've been told there's not enough votes to pass the opt out, and even if there was, Mayor Shore has voted that he would veto it anyway. Yes, 70% of people in Lansing voted for recreational marijuana, but I have talked to many people and they said they have not understood all the other issues that are involved in the legislation before they voted it, voted for it. We are about to begin the discussion of the new medical and recreational marijuana ordinance that is on the agenda tonight for introduction. I want the public to be aware of what will happen if this ordinance passes as the draft ordinance has been written. First, I oppose any type of designated consumption establishments. These are like social clubs. I oppose the microbrews, excess grow, and the event organizer event. They are not required and they will only cause problems in my opinion. The ordinance is very confusing because it now is a combination of medical and recreational together. The following is my understanding of the draft. There is a limit of 25 medical provisioning centers located 
but now there can be or there could be 25 recreational establishments at the same location. This would require 50 Michigan licenses. This ordinance also adds two more, which, or excuse me, three more, which would be six more licenses. Four microbrewers, which would be one per ward, four designated consumption establishments, which would be one per ward. That equals 35 business locations or 64 licenses from the state of Michigan that would be in the city of Lansing. Now let's add the 70 grow businesses in the city of Lansing. The draft ordinance wants to limit to 55 grows, but that is only after the businesses have closed to get down to 55. I believe that 55 grows in the city of Lansing is far too many. I want to ask the citizens to look into this ordinance and have your voices heard. It's your turn to let the council know what your wishes are. Council members, remember, your vote is your legacy, just as it was when the council member voted for the most liberal medical marijuana ordinance in Michigan on September, 20, on September 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Loretta Stanaway and then Linda Appling. I support everything that Elaine just said, and I would like to re uh, point out also to you that there is new research showing that there is a high ratio of pot-induced psychosis compared to previous years because this is not your father's pot. It is much more potent, and it contains oftentimes many contaminants as well. Um, there are statistics always can be interpreted different ways. 70% voted for it, but that means that 30% of the voters uh, did not. And out of all the population, only 60% voted at all, so 40% did not. So you've got a huge number of people still that either did not vote or did not vote to support that. So I think that that should be taken into consideration as well. On the Red Cedar, um, it's been stated by the mayor in quotes in the newspaper that there were some points that needed to be worked out yet before the sale could be finalized. I think we deserve to know what those points are. The city council had voted to authorize the sale. It has not yet taken place. Uh, we need to be informed and transparency is an issue here. Tell us what those points are that have to be worked out before the sale can be finalized. Um, and on the noise ordinance, uh, waiver for that project. There are a lot of residences and businesses in those areas that would be disrupted by 24 hour, seven day a week op operation. I oppose that. We've got the Flower Pot District, Skyview, MSU dorms and, and apartments all nearby there. And most of all, you're talking about continual constant disruption for all the wildlife in that area. You're not giving any birds or insects or amphibians or whatever else is in that vicinity a chance to recover from the disruption at any point for 24 hours, seven days a week? I think not. And going back to the pot briefly, um, there are reasons that the surrounding communities have largely and statewide have largely opted out of going with the recreational pot, at least for now, until the all the ducks get in a row and the legislation gets worked out, the finer points are resolved, and I think that Lansing also should opt out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Linda Appling and then Harold Lehman. Hello, my name is Linda Appling, and I live on Thacken in Lansing, Michigan. I'm here today to talk about the uh, marijuana establishments that the city is currently considering. And in relationship to that, 
I know that we are in the process of revising the provisions governing the selling and growing of marijuana in the city of Lansing. I myself favor and continue to do so the legaliz legalization of marijuana. However, favoring the legalization of marijuana has been confused with favoring the selling and growing of it within the city. I am opposed to allowing the selling and growing of marijuana in the city. Not only am I opposed to it, but, quote, voters in three municipalities have voted for Proposal 1 of 2018, legalizing marijuana, rejected authorizing marijuana businesses and their communities, Vanderbilt, Highland Park, and Crystal Lake Township, in terms of that. Further, more than 500 Michigan communities have opted out of allowing recreational marijuana establishments. Several similar proposals are expected in November. The three results suggest that just because voters in the community pass recreational marijuana legislation, they do not necessarily want all types of marijuana businesses in their community. And I'm one of those people that I don't want those businesses in my community. I'll be very blunt about it. It's destructive and it'll affect the property values. The city of Lansing has options other than approving these proposed provisions. One, they can outright reject the establishments of selling and growing of marijuana in the city. Or it can also place the proposed provisions on the ballot and let the residents vote on it. The residents should be able to decide whether or not they want establishments that sell and grow marijuana in this city. Thank you. Thank you, next is Harold Lehman and then Mary Reynolds. Thank you. Um, just a footnote uh, regarding the first speaker. Uh, when they somewhat uh, use the issue about your vote is your legacy, well, your votes are your legacy. I want a person on council with overall record, not someone that maybe goes out of their way to get the public uh, aroused and uh, get them down here and say, um, you know, we got to stop this and uh, use a word such as uh, threatening you politely. I want someone that will look at the issues over the entire time they're there and they got a good record, not pick one vote out. Uh, I'm here tonight regarding just setting this public hearing in consideration of a noise special permit that's coming out of the General Services Committee. Uh, Continental slash Ferguson Lansing LLC Red Cedar development to perform the earthwork. There's no definis, definition of what earthwork is. Loretta may, uh, may have uh, contributed to what she thinks this earthwork is all about. 24 hours a day, seven days a week from October 1st, 2019 through November 30th, 2019. Uh, there has to be an explanation of this. There, it's going to go on 24 7, especially in an election year on the east side. I can't believe it. If someone would do some history, there was an election in uh, 1991. Alan Beale versus Pat Lindemann. Mayor McCain was the mayor. He put out the bills for the recycling program. Pat Lindemann was defeated because of that. And um, Ellen was the one that uh, got the win, and uh, Pat Lindemann blamed the uh, mayor at that time for sending out the bills, because everybody up in Grosbeck took their uh, recyclables up to Granger. But uh, let me just continue that um, for construction, and then this other issue about construction activities from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 beginning December 1st, 2019 for the duration of the project. Um, you know, you have Lansing Township, East Lansing, you have all these residents, whether they're students or the seniors in Friendship Manor, 
All this construction is going on right now on Michigan Avenue up near Harrison Road. Uh, a lot of people aren't paying attention. They will pay attention when the, when the construction vehicles are out there. And uh, I just hope that when you do set, if you do set the public hearing, uh, there's some explanation of what you know about Thank it. You. Because this could be a disaster for a lot of people on the Thank council. you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Mary Reynolds. Hi guys. Well, I wasn't going to talk tonight, but then I decided I better after I listened a while. Let's take the construction of the Red Cedar. They're probably under contract. They're probably under time. They got to fight with the weather. They're going to have to do it whatever time they can, weather permitting. That's probably why they're asking for that. They're asking before they put the shovel in the dirt not afterwards and get caught in the middle. Marijuana. Now, people don't like it this way, but you liken marijuana to alcohol. A lot of people made a lot of money off prohibition. A lot of money. I think we might better legalize it, medically and recreationally, guide it, Inspect it, just like you do alcohol. You don't just go pop a bottle of alcohol anymore. You got to put. You got about 120 seals you put on it, just belonging to the state. You might better look at it, see it for what it is, control it. You cannot, and I don't know how long it's going to take people to know this. You cannot regulate people who want to do something. They are going to smoke that marijuana. They are going to drink that alcohol. They are going to smoke cigarettes. Look at the big, do you not realize the millions and millions of dollars in, in ad, ads that have gone and said, don't smoke cigarettes, they could kill you. You have three or four outside the city hall every day that go out there and smoke their cigarettes. You might better let them do it and tax 11 daylights right out of it. It makes your treasury go up. Maybe it will reduce the personal taxes. Don't know. It's a thought. It's not any crazier than any other thoughts that's came down the tube with the marijuana. They're going to do it. Put it where you can control it and look at it and examine it. Don't just shove it off and say, nope, go back and make it in your garages. Go grow it in your garage. You've got 21 plants. You can grow a garage. You can't count, so you could do 42 instead of 21. You know, you just legalize it, tax it, and reduce the taxes on the rest of us. Okay? You guys have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are to the referral of the public hearings, number one, the chapter 288. Uh, that will go back to general services. And we are to the consent agenda. Vice President Spadafore. Um, it looks as if, would you like the Roma Bakery one pulled? Go ahead. Okay. We'll just pull all of the items listed on the consent agenda then. Except for Roma Bakery. Oh, except for Roma Bakery and the uh, Lansing Harmony Celebration. Which is already passed. Correct. So I move the consent agenda, which is item 1A. All right, we have a motion on uh, the tribute that was requested for Roma Bakery. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Then we are to uh, the Committee on Development and Planning. Uh, Council Member Hussein. Sure. So this re uh, resolution is uh, in support of uh, Brownfield Plan Number 76, Farnham Building Redevelopment Project at 123 West Allegan Street. Uh, this pertains to the Farnham Redevelopment Project. Uh, the applicant is Allegan Street LLC, who is on hand tonight with us. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. Uh, the project uh, includes $20 million of investment. Uh, $2.8 million uh, is eligible for capture over a 21-year uh, period. Uh, in terms of the building itself, uh, this building was constructed back in 1959. It's been vacant since 2016 when the Michigan Senate moved out. Um, Boji uh, Group, which is the developer, they've been working with the Lansing Brownfield Redevel Redevelopment Authority in the city of Lansing for the you know a little bit longer than the past year uh, to try to make this project work. 
Um, in any event, the eligible activities uh, include interior demo, asbestos abatement, infrastructure improvements, uh, and the like. Um, notably, uh, the building is currently uh, considered functionally obsolete. And we had a little bit of conversation today in development and planning about that. Uh, and the obsole obsolescence stems from um, an outdated configuration, heating and electrical systems, uh, but primarily um, you know, above and beyond that um, would be the, uh, the asbestos uh, that is throughout this uh, building. There's a 10% pass through as part of this brownfield plan, uh, which means 10% of all new taxes will go to the TIFA. Uh, there's 5% uh, that will go to the Lansing Brownfield, re sorry, sorry, revolving fund, 5% to the Michigan uh, Brownfield revolving fund, and 5% uh, to the Lansing Brownfield Redevelopment Authority for admin fees, uh, which amount to $125,000 respectively. Um, there are uh, estimated to be uh, 50 construction jobs that will be created temporarily um, as part of this project in the development agreement. Uh, you know, we always have this conversation pertaining to local labor. Uh, there is language that speaks to uh, local labor preference uh, as well as um, uh, bids being posted on the builders exchange. Um, and so that, that's something that the development and planning committee has, has absolutely um, uh, made a priority this year to make sure that we're having those conversations and then also speaking with LEAP uh, in terms of follow up um, on some of these projects. Um, the, the, the only other thing is there is uh, there was some conversation about uh, jobs created um, in perpetuity. Um, they're looking at uh, up to 200 positions, uh, but again, that um, this is this is actually going to be reconfigured the space into Class A office space. Uh, so that is contingent on their ability to actually uh, attract tenants uh, to this particular uh, property. So with that being uh, said, I'd move Brownfield Plan Number 76. All right, we have a motion on the floor uh, for the Brownfield plan. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Councilmember Hussein. We are to the Committee on General Services. Councilmember Washington. Thank you, Madam President. The first thing we have before us is a resolution asking to change um, a fireworks display at the uh, Lansing Lugnut. It was originally scheduled to be held October 5th. Unfortunately, well, or fortunately, this is the MSU Ohio State College football game. And they, when you're trying to get energy for a new soccer team, they didn't think that they would probably get a huge attendance with the MSU Ohio State game going on. So what they would like to do is change that date um, to no, from October 5th, I'm sorry. That's when the MSU Ohio State game is. And the new date for the um, firework display will be uh, September 28th. So with that, I would pass the resolution. We have a um, motion on uh, the table to just um, uh, move these fireworks um, from one date to another. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. I oppose, passes unanimously. Council Member Washington. Thank you, Madam President. The next thing we have before us is introduction and set the public hearing for ordinance amendments. Oh, no, no, no. Um, set the public hearing for the noise waiver for the Red Cedar development. Um, we had Mr. Kilpatrick in today. He explained that the applicant has requested um, to have the um, the development has requested that the city pass this noise resolution because um, they plan to have phase one open in August 2021 because the first portion is the student housing. So they want to ensure that they have that finished to um, correlate with the opening of the MSU semester. Um, that schedule needs to begin this October to meet that deadline and it is for the mass grading for the foundation of um, that student housing. Uh, they have um, made contact with the surrounding townships. The um, challenge is reaching all the residents in the MSU dorms that are um, next to this, but Michigan State is helping with that list so that we can make contact with all of those students. And um, the only parcel in the city of Lansing that is um, connected to this that will be affected is the Skyview Complex, and they've already made contact with all of those residents. Um, okay. It was asked if um, the owners have closed and taken legal ownership on the property. It was confirmed that the city believes it will occur on September 12th. 
Is that correct, Andy? Yes. Okay. Um, and there, there are conditions for the closing, and one being the site plan, which I've been told we have made major progress on. So the noise waiver will not proceed if they do not have the closing or obtain ownership. And as folks have stated, this is um, 24 hours from October 1st through December, and then um, seven to seven, seven days a week after that until the project is finished. Um, as we go forward with this, this is just uh, to have the public hearing, which will be for uh, September 23rd on this noise waiver. And um, then we as a council can see what the public says, but I certainly hope we don't uh, rest our vote on threats of not being reelected. So with that, I would move the public hearing. We have a motion on the floor. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, passes unanimously. We are, we are to the Committee on Intergovernmental Relations. Council Member Garza. Thank you, Madam President. So this is the Climate Action Plan Project Report. Um, the Committee of Intergovernmental Relations discussed changing the deadline date for the report from Resolution 2019-071 to December, 1st, December 31st, 2019. Mr. Kilpatrick confirmed they have all the vehicle information, the electric from BWL, but they are waiting on the consumer's energy along, usage along with water and sewer. Once all the information is obtained, they can estimate the baseline from energy costs, greenhouse gases, and look at how to compare other buildings and vehicle fleet. So with that, uh, I'd like to move uh, the Climate Action Plan Project report to amend the deadline to December 31st, 2019. Uh, we have a motion on the table. Are there any questions or concerns? Uh, the only question I would have, Council Member Garza, is if the report is not done until December 31st, then there will not be any recommendation from this current committee on that because you won't be taking it up until the next committee, just so that we're all aware of that. Okay? All right. Thank you. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We are to the Committee on Public Services. Vice President Spadafore. Okay, so what we have um, coming up next is uh, opting into the Michigan Local Agency Pavement Warranty Program. Um, we have to adopt these in a very specific order, so we'll make sure that we do that. Um, okay. We're doing this because we have to. Um, it will usually not apply to the city of Lansing. It's for road projects over $2 million, and we don't have road projects over $2 million, so this shouldn't apply to it, but it was basically part of the transportation funding package of 2015 that would require each municipality to adopt a local pavement warranty program um, and then um, for any project over two million dollars uh, of paving components and as I said we won't have that so um, it is perfunctory and we have to do it because the state says so so with that I would move the first um, a resolution opting into the local agency pavement warranty program all right we have a motion on the table and this is the opt-in portion of it are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Vice President Spadafore. The next uh, resolution in front of us would implement and establish reporting for our version of the Michigan Local Agency Pavement Warranty Program that we will never use. So I will move the resolution. <laughs> okay. We have a motion to... to um, for the implementation and reporting. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. And we are, we are to the Committee of the Whole. Vice President Spadafore. The next resolution um, is dealing with the... Uh, one moment, please. Let me pull it up. Uh, recently, Kroger has decided to discontinue the distribution of free publications in their um, in their stores, several in the city of Lansing. Um, we'd been requested by the City Pulse um, folks to pass a resolution urging them to reconsider this, this policy. Um, as you know, a wide circulation of the City Pulse, um, one of the places you can pick it up is Kroger. 
And we mentioned this in um, the Committee of the Whole, that this body, a lot of what we do is published in the City Pulse as a paper of record for the city. And um, to lose that distribution venue would be detrimental to the work of the City Council. So I would move the resolution uh, strongly encouraging Kroger to change their policy and resume allowing publications to offer their free newspapers and support the public notification process. Uh, we have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Councilmember Washington. Thank you, Madam President. Are we going to assure that this gets to the Kroger establishments in this city? It does not say in the bottom of the resolution that that will happen, but at this point, what I would be looking at is instructing the clerk to make sure that this is, uh, once it's been certified, is sent to um, the Kroger's within the corporate uh, city limits as well as to the corporate office. Thank you. Corporate offices, okay. Are there any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, passes unanimously. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I would like to next move the resolution setting a public hearing for the creation of the Lansing Gateway Corridor Improvement Authority to take place on October 14th, 2019 at 7 p.m. This, is, this might sound familiar to some of you folks listening at home. We did set a public hearing for September 23rd on the same topic but the notification did not include the location, so we're holding a second public hearing. Feel free to show up at all of them, but um, there will be one on the, the 14th at 7 p.m. to establish the Lansing Gateway Corridor Improvement Authority. All right, we have a motion in front of us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye, Pose. passes unanimously. Vice President Spadafore. Everything I said about the last one applies to the next one, so I would move the resolution establishing, setting a public hearing for the establishment of the South Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Corridor Improvement Authority for October 14th, 2019 at 7 p.m. here in City Council Chambers. Uh, thank you, we have a motion in front of us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye, uh, opposed, passes unanimously. And we are still on the Committee of the Whole, now for the sixth vote item. Uh, Vice President Spadafore. This is a wonderful grant from EGLE, which is the Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. Um, it's in the successor for the Department of Environmental Quality. It's a $480,000 grant between the City of Lansing and East Lansing to purchase new recycling. I think we're the packers, is that the right term, Andy? All right. Um, we are purchasing one, and the city of East Lansing is purchasing one. Our share for our, ours is um, $240,000 plus local dollars of $93,000, and East Lansing is a little bit more because they like to buy nicer things over there. Is that what I heard? Is that <laughs> not true? So anyway, we're accepting the grant. We're going to act as the fiduciary for East Lansing, so I would move the acceptance of the grant. All right. We have motion on the floor. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, we are to ordinances for introduction. Uh, President Wood introduced an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend the Lansing Codified Ordinances by amending Chapter 1300, Sections 1 through 16 to add business licenses to address, to, to address recreational marijuana and update the ordinance to reflect changes in law and laws and rules. The ordinance is read a first time by its title and refer to the Committee on Public Safety. At this point, I'm going to pass the gavel. <laughs> President Wood. Uh, what we have before us is setting the public hearing on the marijuana ordinance that would um, uh, designate the establishments and operations for both recreation and uh, medical marijuana. Um, we have um, three options in front of us as a council. One is to um, opt out and um, not have any uh, recreational marijuana uh, facilities within inside the city of Lansing. Two is to do nothing, 
um, by November 1st, which would allow any uh, group that has a license uh, with the state of Michigan to um, become licensed within the city to operate under any of the licenses that are available. And three is to create an ordinance ourselves that uh, would put limitations on uh, what could happen with inside the city limits. The mayor, uh, Shore, gave uh, the council a uh, draft uh, ordinance to work from. The Committee on Public Safety has been working on it uh, diligently every Tuesday since we received um, the ordinance. This has been to um, the planning board and came out of the planning board um, unanimously. Um, some of the things that um, are, are in this is that currently we have 25 licenses uh, for uh, medical marijuana establishments. Uh, we would be increasing three, we would add three other establishments that would be able to be licensed as our speakers that spoke did uh, say correctly, that all of the 25 that are currently selling medical marijuana could then sell recreational marijuana. Uh, we changed the, um, made one provision in the buffering and changed uh, that um, from um, public parks with three pieces of playground equipment to public park period. Uh, we also um, uh, took out the section that dealt with one day um, permits. Um, that was something that we did not feel was something that was advantageous for um, our community. We also um, limited the number of micro businesses uh, that could operate within the city to one per ward. We also, um, uh, the designation for designated consumption establishments or social clubs, it's being called um, both of those. We also made the provision that there would only be one per ward. With both um, uh, provisioning centers, uh, marijuana retailers, uh, micro uh, businesses and uh, consumption establishments, uh, none would be permitted to sell or consume alcohol on premise uh, was another uh, thing that was added. There were a number of provisions that were, um, that had been stricken from the ordinance based on recommendations from the city clerk. Um, anywhere from the commission um, that had been established to the fact that there was um, the ability to receive um, a, a waiver um, going to the Zoning um, Board of Appeals. We also did um, add into the ordinance um, a cap on grow facilities uh, that was um, uh, they established at 75, and it, but as licenses um, either were not renewed or moved, that the cap would go down to 55. Um, so those that are currently in place would be grandfathered in, and any of the other establishments that currently have licenses would be grandfathered in. This um, ordinance will be reviewed in um, whole by the Committee of a Whole on the 23rd. Uh, we have asked um, our um, legal liaison that is uh, from the city attorney's office to prepare a memo for council members with all of the changes on that that you will get before uh, the 23rd so that you're able um, to review that. Uh, we would be asking to set the public hearing for the 30th because this is a zoning um, Ordinance, the zoning ordinance requires 15 day notice. So that would mean from today, we could not have the meeting on the 23rd uh, for the public hearing. We have to have it on the 30th. 
Also, because this is a zoning ordinance, you cannot have immediate effect. This has to be in place by November 1st, which will mean that we will have to also vote on this on September 30th. So not only will we be having the public hearing, but we will be voting on it on the 30th as well. Uh, with that, I'd be glad to take any questions. Are there questions? Uh, Council Member Washington. Thank you, um, Vice Chair um, Spadafore. Carol, just really quickly, I just have a question. Um, I understand the micro business. That's where they can grow it and sell it and consume it on site, right. correct? What I'm not understanding is the social club, how that would operate. Um, is there, will there be a fee to enter these social clubs? Who runs these social clubs? And do we haven't had much success with the social clubs we have? And so I guess I'm wondering, do we have an ordinance in place to um, to determine how these will be? We have asked the city attorney's office to look into social clubs simply because of the things that have arisen before we got into this. We are looking to see if we can create an ordinance that would be applicable um, to that. So that is something that we are working on as well. But again, because of the timeline, we are at, at this um, crunch. So we will be working at trying to establish that before the November 1st. Um, okay, because I'm not understanding this at all. Can just any Joe Smith open up a social club? And, Again, this is by know? the rules that are um, the emergency um, rules that have come down through the medical marijuana board is it is that correct heather board the medical marijuana the 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 marijuana emergency rules came from lara so are these social clubs only for medical marijuana no it's for recreational and i need some clarification yeah. on all that council member dunbar um, one thing that is um, very concerning to me, especially since we're going to have a single ordinance that covers both, um, and I think that in many ways we've talked about this uh, in the past and the state's taking up now, but it's social equity. Um, and I don't see that in the new ordinance. And I don't know that... Um, it necessarily has to be spelled out. I've asked um, um, Heather to help out um, with some language on whether or not it needs to be in the ordinance or if it's something that Chris can take up in the scoring section. But um, I think it's really important that even at the state level, social equity has made its way into the process. And they are actually, I know we're not a designated city, and that's because we, as a city, realized that it's kind of a waste of time to go after people for small possession um, and incarcerate them for any length of time. And so because we were pretty progressive in how we treated um, anybody who was caught in possession of or selling small amounts of marijuana um, differently, uh, we are not one of the, the communities that's been identified as at, at the state level um, for social equity. However, I do believe that it's important for us to put a social equity component in here, and I would like to mirror um, the states, and I'm not sure how that would happen, um, if it's in the ordinance or if it's in the application process, but at the state level, I mean, let's just go back historically. I mean, we're talking about communities all over the country that have legalized marijuana and they are now seeing that they're commuting sentences of people who were behind bars for small possession, minor possession, minor selling, because it's ridiculous to keep somebody, and it's not fair to keep somebody incarcerated for something that is now legal. And in the same regard, it is not fair to limit opportunity within communities who have been most affected by um, disproportionate enforcement 
from profiting from the marijuana industry. And I know that we've all seen in this process that we have some very big players who have come into town um, and are operating and made it through the licensing, but a lot of local people haven't. And so I would propose that at least for the micros and the social, that we have social equity um, regarding, maybe it has to be in the ordinance for this one, but at the state level, what they do is they provide 25% reduction in the application fee for anyone who has lived in a community for five years or more. So you have a residency um, component. You get another 25% reduction in the fee if you've lived in the community for five years and you have a marijuana conviction because it's actually giving an opportunity to somebody who's been forced out of economic opportunity for having been um, involved in a minor nonviolent marijuana conviction. And third, they give another 10% uh, discount so they can almost get 60% off the application process if they've been a, a two-year primary caregiver between 2008 and 2017. And you know, for, for a lot of our local residents who were in the marijuana industry and then were removed from the marijuana opportunity because of really steep application fees at the state, really steep you know, bonding, they had to have $50,000 liquid in the bank. That's not what a lot of our locals um, would have. So to increase the ability for um, folks that are in disproportionately affected communities, um, and that means you know, urban areas, lower income communities of color, if we could put something in place that would reduce with those criteria that are used at the state, um, it would take the application fee down from 5,000 to 2,000. Again, this is only for the micros and the social establishments and take the requirement for the bond from 50 to 20,000 or if they're going to be doing um, cash, it would be from 20,000 to um, to what would it be, 8,000, 8,000. But I think it's really important for us that, um, that we consider social equity in this process. Um, so I, I just, I'm putting that out there. It's not, I'm not on the committee. I don't have a say in the draft before it comes forward. But I think that before we actually vote on this on the 30th, we need to give this some um, consideration so that our own local, people who have been most, again, disproportionately affected by overzealous incarceration um, and enforcement in this industry should have a shot at becoming economically enhanced by this industry. I've got council members Garza, Spitzley, and Wood, but I think council member Wood would like to respond. Um, yes, I would. Um, uh, first of all, I think the city attorney would like to make a couple of comments, uh, Council Member Dunbar's um, comments. Uh, I, again, our goal was today to set the public hearing and then on the 23rd, during a intense committee of a whole, to go over any recommendations and things that the council member, other council members might have um, with regards to, to this. But we also have to remember we are on a deadline. So that that's also part of, of this. So city attorney could quickly address council member um, Dunbar's, then we can move on at your discretion. <laughs> Great idea. Well, okay, Mr. Mr. City attorney. So just the, the, the concept of the social equity is in the state regulatory system. And this community has not been designated. If we were to even, if you were to even consider putting that in this ordinance, you, I would certainly advise against doing that without a hearing and testimony to demonstrate that there is a wrong here that you are gonna remedy by it because otherwise it will be challenged under equal protection and without that evidence, it stands to fall. And so that's, 
And where would it be put? It would be put in the scoring system. At least my feeling is it would be in the scoring system. So that's my comment. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. Council Member Garza. Thank you, Vice President Spatterfor. So this is a question, I guess, for the City Attorney. I know we just established that this is for recreational marijuana, not medical marijuana. Is there al no, it's not? Both. It's mm -hmm. for both. Yeah. Okay, well, is alcohol allowed in social clubs? No. Okay, thank you. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Vice President Spatterfor. So the, the issue of, of equity um, for the medical marijuana and the recreational marijuana um, is an interesting um, topic. Um, and that the allegation is that the people who are most likely incarcerated for medical marijuana um, were the people that are most disproportionately impacted because of big business coming in. Um, well, the most of the people, the majority of the people were African American that were incarcerated for the medical, mar for marijuana crimes. And the majority of people who had dispensaries here were not African American. So there is no, there is no disparity in my mind argument. If we're gonna do that, then we would, you know, and I would not agree with this, but we would have to talk about race. The, the overwhelming majority of the owners, not that it's good or it's bad, it just is. The overwhelming majority of dispensary owners in the city of Lansing were not African American. If you look at statistics, the overwhelming majority of people who are arrested for marijuana related crimes are African American. So there, the disparity argument in my mind is, is not an argument that applies here in the city of Lansing. Thank you. I don't know that saying that none of the dispensary owners have that. ever been black or I'm, okay. So, but you're saying that most of them have been white. I don't. I don't. I'm not trying to go back to what it was. I'm trying to open it up to a portion of the community that has been like, if you want to, we don't have to use black, white. We can say incarcerated disproportionate numbers of people of color have been incarcerated have had disproportionate sentencing have been majorly affected by me any medical marijuana enforcement marijuana sentencing there's it's it's there's there's no real arguing that i'm just trying to open up the industry to people who have who have been disproportionately affected by it and let them have an opportunity to have economic gain from it. Um, because that's, I think, where true equity comes from. It comes from, one, not having discrimination, but two, allowing economic parity. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you, Councilmember Washington. Um, thank you, Vice President Spadafor. First of all, I, I want to thank the Public Safety Committee and Mayor Shore for working hand in hand on this ordinance that is going to be coming forth. This is something that um, we, you know, frankly, I would contact some people too and said, I don't want a crap show on the night that this comes forward. It was very important to me that it not become a, a mess at this dais at the last minute. It was incredibly important to me. And Councilwoman Spitzley, I agree with you 100%. It is the African American community that was disproportionately incarcerated over marijuana. And if you're gonna talk equity, you have to talk about the African American community. And if you're going to do that, you can't just say, here you go, you were incarcerated, you get to have a dispensary or a business. Because you know what, you're setting people up for failure. Unless there is an educational component on how to run a business that goes with that, you are setting people up for failure. And I disagree with that. I think it's a feel-good um, proposal for people, but it is much more serious than that. And I, you know, I, I agree with you 100%. But more than that, I just wanted to say this is not something that has just come out. We've all been aware of this ordinance. We've all been able to read the minutes. I, I truly thank the committee and Mayor Shore for working hand in hand so that we can go forward without this becoming a disastrous mess. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Dunbar, then Council President Wood. Thank you. Um, again, 
Um, I'm not suggesting that anyone just by virtue of being black gets a license. Um, that there are criteria in here that spell out business plans and um, security and all the things that were in here and all that are required at the state level, they'd have to still get approved at the state level in order to have a license here. This isn't, I, I think that, that that the comment that we would just be handing somebody a license, handing them a license just because they fit a, a, a racial profile is not what social equity is about. It's, um, it was very clear that you would have to go through the entire process and you'd have to go through the scoring. The only difference is that you may get a bump because you've been incarcerated for a marijuana related crime. You might get a reduction in your fees because you're not a giant corporation coming in here to open up a marijuana business. You're just a local guy that wants to be a part of this economic opportunity or gal, and it certainly didn't mean to s say that it's for men. But equity is not about a handout. It's about <clears throat> making sure that they're qualified in every other way and giving them a little bump. This is about the introduction of the ordinance too, so we'll go back to Council Member Wood, then wrap up with Council I, Member Spitzley. I, I would yield to Council Member Spitzley <clears throat> and then I'll take my time. Council Member Spitzley. See, the problem with social equity or language that talks about social equity is this. You know, you, you, you say that, you know, we, we've, we've established, you know, that most of the, um, you know, marijuana crimes, a, a large majority of African Americans are, are incarcerated or have been fined for marijuana. The problem is this, that, you know, you put this, you put this feel good language in about social equity, but let's be real. They don't have the money to even do the two thousand dollars. They don't have their. They they they. They the African American community. They don't. So here's because if they did, they would have. You you talked about that. Um, you know the, the 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 small business owners here were pushed out. Who were the small business owners before the large people came in? It was mostly Caucasian again. You know, there's, there's no type of support structure, and I agree, there's no type of support structure for this. You throw this language in here, and who, who, who is, you know, the people that can afford it are our big business. The small business people that were here in town had every opportunity, again, to apply for licenses like everybody did. The problem is, you know, everybody wants regulation, and everybody wanted to have this thing a regulatory structure. What's going to happen? Big business comes in. That's, that's what happens. That's unfortunately what happens. And the people who have the dollars get the licenses. At the end of the day, you know, if you're going to have social equity, again, it, you know, the people that you're directing it to, you, without some sort of assistance or some sort of structure, they're, they're not going to be able to take advantage of the program. And you're just putting language in to make yourselves feel good. Council Member Wood, President Wood. As you indicated, what we're doing is setting the public hearing and this would be for the 30th. I also want to make sure that this body that's sitting here remembers, and no disrespect to anyone that's sitting here, but the fiasco that happened the last time we went through this. And the reason I say fiasco is because at the last minute, we were making changes to something that had taken the Public Safety Committee 18 months of hearings, word by word, going through the ordinance to get to where we were. And at the last minute, we had all of these changes. And now, even from the clerk, there were a number of things that were added that have been stricken because he saw through the process that it didn't work well. So what I'd like to do is at this point call the question to setting the public hearing 
and then allow us to have the, the rest of this discussion on the 23rd. Motion has been made to call the question. Do we need a roll call vote under Mason's? No. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Motion carries six to one, six to two, yeah, six, six one. What's that? No. Now the motion on. Now we need a motion to set the public hearing for the, um, the amending, amending chapter 1300 marijuana establishments. I, I move that. It's been moved by Council President Wood. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, we are to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. That is the yellow sheet in the back. I'll give you just a couple more seconds to jump up and sign if you would like to speak this evening. And uh, with that, we are to reports of city officers, boards, and commissions. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I move that all items be considered as being read in full and the proper referrals be made by you. Uh, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Mr. Clerk. We have letters from the mayor regarding encouraging Kroger to change their policy and resume allowing publications. Committee of a whole and placed on file since we already took action. Uh, obsolete Property Rehabilitation Act District for ANC Holdings at 1611 East Kalamazoo. Development and Planning Committee. Obsolete Property Rehabilitation Act Certificate for Blackboard District LLC at 1030 South Holmes. Uh, Development and Planning Committee. Uh, Saginaw Street Corridor Improvement Authority Development and Finance Plan. This is not setting the public. The, uh, the, these are the Corridor Improvement Authorities that have been in existence. Okay. So this is a step in All right. financing them. Development and Planning. And the Michigan Avenue Corridor Improvement Authority Development and Finance Plan. Development and Planning. Uh, noise Special Permit, Continental Ferguson for the Red Cedar Development. General services and placed on file. Communications and petitions, a claim, uh, appeal claim number 1722, Michael and Roberta Jones for $3,811 in trash violations at 924 Middle Street. General services. Well, we are true. Motion of excused absence. A motion for excused absence from for Council Member um, Jackson. So moved. Oh. We have a motion from Council Member Hussein. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. And we are to remarks by council members. Remarks by council members. Uh, council Member Dunbar and Council Member Spadafore. Thank you. I'll just use this minute to say that regarding this ordinance and social equity, to make the comment that anyone who has been involved with marijuana would never have the money or the know-how to run a business and that it would be setting people up for failure, I think that is such a disservice. Point of order, Madam it President. A, no, it's not a point, point of, of order. Point of order, Madam President. I'm, you can't Council call a point Spitzley. of order on my opinion. She can, point of she order, can Madam call President. a point of order. I'm recognizing her on the point of order. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. That's not what I, that's not what I said at all. It's not what I said at all. So please do not, please do not, um, do not incorrectly characterize what I said or first what my intent was. First of all, it wasn't was. you that said it first, okay? What, what I'm saying is point that it um, is we, not point of order. We have, a point, we have a point of order. I do not want an interpretation of what I said. What I said was very clear. And what you are saying is that I am saying that no person of color would know how to run a business, and that is not what I'm saying. And I resent you trying to put okay. words in my mouth. Okay. What I was saying is if you are going to take an individual of a lower socioeconomic African-American person, this would very well be the case. What you are talking about are people of means, of people of color, that are able to do this. And I'm not so sure that's a social equity issue. So please, in the future, do not interpret my words for the public. I Member Dunbar. Thank you very much. What I heard, and I'll watch the replay if I'm wrong, 
was the comment that this is a feel-good component that African Americans are disproportionately affected by marijuana enforcement and incarceration, but that giving them a discount on the application with no education would be a recipe for disaster and failure. And I asked specifically who them is, because them isn't everybody who's been involved in marijuana. Them isn't every. They have to, any applicant has to go through the process and show a business plan. All it does is eliminate some of the economic hurdles. Some people don't, I don't have $50,000, and it doesn't necessarily mean I have to be black. If I were somebody who'd been affected by a marijuana conviction, then I might be able to qualify, whereas I can't. I can't get a job in many places because I have to check a box. I can't own a business. I can't pass licensing. This is an opportunity to rectify a situation that has been long been disproportionately, adversely affecting certain members of the community. That's all. Thank you. Council Member, Vice President Spadafore. Um, Sunday, yeah, I wanted to just make note, uh, the Lansing School District will be celebrating the retirement of Superintendent Yvonne Kamal Kanul. She's been in education for 40 years, serving in various different roles, but there will be a nice celebration of her career um, Sunday afternoon at the university. I think it's the U Club. Um, but at any rate, uh, so I'll be attending that um, in a different role, but um, I've asked the to present a tribute on behalf of city council as well. So that'll be done um, Sunday on your behalf. Um, and I'm just very proud of her, um, happy for her and her retirement, her husband, Victor. So congratulations, Yvonne. Thank you. Other council member comments? Seeing none, the mayor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, in public comment, there was a question about the status of the Red Cedar. So I'm happy to answer that. Um, they are collecting financing. Um, we have done our job, uh, we've passed the Brownfield, we have passed the development agreement, and as I think everybody on council, and I don't think, I know everybody on council knows, we don't generally do cash up front, we do on reimbursement based on tax increment financing, so they have to finance it. Um, so they are in the process of collecting financing. Um, I know the, the, the point was made before that, um, that they're very, very close, and my understanding is they are very, very close, but they are working that out with their banks and bridge loans and all of these things, um, and we are just making sure that it satisfies the Brownfield Agreement and Development Agreement that was passed by this council, um, supported by me, so we're kind of the backstop right now, and um, I expect that to be done soon, um, but uh, it's really, we don't have a, a, an involvement in terms of the financing between the banks and the developers. So that is the status, I have not been, I, I know I said that on, on the Bur on Burl's um, City Pulse show. I know I've said that in the paper, but um, if we haven't gotten that message out, my apologies to the public, and I'm happy to, to explain it here. Are there other comments? Um, I would just like to um, ask the mayor um, if he would publicly indicate on the uh, marijuana ordinance uh, where he is on that. Sure, well, um, as has been mentioned and alluded to, um, you know, we proposed it, public safety, um, had many conversations on it. Uh, I am uh, comfortable with the language. I know we had some good conversations. I'm comfortable with the language um, on, uh, on the buffering. That was where we had uh, some, some conversations. Um, you know, I, I didn't get everything I wanted. I don't think everybody got everything they wanted, but the, the language that came out of public safety uh, I am supportive of. I, I, assuming that's the language that comes before this council and passes, then I will not be vetoing that. Um, but there's, there's more process to be had, so I, I continue to stay engaged and keep involved and in the loop. And um, as it is right now, I'm supportive, but as you all know better than I, everything can change on a dime, so I'm, I'm keeping very close uh, attention because, as you said, um, this has to be done by, by November 1st. We want to make sure that this is done because if this isn't done by November 1st, I think everybody is um, not not happy. All right, thank you. Our speakers. Uh, we have Loretta Stanaway and then Curtis J. Pratt. Oh, 
Okay, um, I am a small business owner. I've been in business 20 years. I'm a woman, so I'm a minority in a sense in, this, in that respect. Uh, I have never received a TIFA, a Brownfield, an Oprah, so I am economically disadvantaged in running my business because I am competing against bigger businesses who have the money to go and get those things. That's a specious argument. It's as specious as some of the others I've heard tonight. The reality is that the majority of the people that I speak to anyway, that I run into in my day-to-day -day activities, do not want to see recreational marijuana in the city limits at all, let alone by these numbers. They are fed up with going into McDonald's or Kroger's or Walmart or wherever and having to walk through a cloud of smoke to get there. They're fed up with standing in line next to somebody that reeks so bad you have to put on a, a inhaler to breathe and they don't want to see their neighborhoods and their property values de de diminished by these things. If you don't think that big business is going to come in and run this, you're wrong. If you do think that it's going to mean a cash bonanza for the city for taxes, you're also wrong. More and more places that have gone to recreational marijuana nationwide anecdotally have proven that crime increases and the generating of revenue does not meet the expectations and the costs increase for police and fire and all the other things that go with uh, taking care of the outcomes from these businesses and the effects on the residents that it has. So if you're looking for this to be a cash cow, you're milking the wrong animal. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our final speaker is Curtis J. Pratt. How are you, my friends? I'm CJ. Instead of Curtis James, you can call me CJ. I, I love the city of Lansing being originally from Boston, Massachusetts for the essence that there is art and I am a blessed artist in surrealism. I was just on Channel 6 News two nights ago with the expression in the Art Council about it and uh, I was happy to have my art shared. With that, there's two events that I, I could have, the, the Interfaith Rock the Block uh, is coming again and on this Thursday and the 22nd I will be personally at the Turner Dodge House doing another art show. Can express that. Um, so I thank the city. On that, I wish to remember the, as the lead pioneer of the Baha'i faith and a very strong leader in interfaith relations with Imam Sahel Shadri and the clergy at all the, all the churches and synagogues and mosques in the city at the present moment, having been a man who lost his job with the city of Lansing in regards to the city's failure to protect the constitutional rights of religion, I wish to ask that Lansing forgive 9-11 and seek to place this attack into a blind spot and earnestly strive for an honest interfaith connection 9-11 discussions create Islamophobia, which poisons the growth of our community, our municipality, our state, our nation, and our world. Christ and Muhammad, and then Baha'u'llah are all the truth and our ways to the truth for the attributes of God. Now we'll end these wars, and if we can do that in Lansing, I think that's a strong thing the city council would love to be able to do is to learn, look, forgive, 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 and move into interreligious equality, inter, you know, of all equality of all sorts. That's what we really need. So that's what I express within my artwork, and I think that's what I would love to see Mayor Shore be able to do is to bring true love and harmony to all the people and to end these wars. It's essential for the true language of peace. For that, I thank you. That would be with the Arts Council. I am with the Arts Council and the United Nations Council of Lansing and also all the churches, synagogues, and mosques. So I thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That was our final speaker. And we are adjourned. <laughs>